stuff. So my name's Tony. If, uh, if you don't know who I am, I, uh, I was with the Jehovah's Witnesses for just four years. So I experienced as Dawn and, and Jason in those things. But I, very similar to something Jason was just saying there, the reason I got into the Jehovah's Witnesses is because my, uh, my mum died when I was 21 years old, so just a couple of years ago now. And um, she, uh, she passed away. I had no Christian upbringing. I had questions. Met the JWs through my sister. They said, your mum's going to get a second chance because she's died before Armageddon. You're only 21. Armageddon's coming really soon. If you want to see her again, you need to join us. And so I fell for it and, uh, and got involved with it. So that's what happened to me. But I'm going to talk to you about Jehovah's Witnesses now. We'll talk to you a little bit about Mormons. Um, I discovered, well, maybe more, more than me discovered, but I discovered that the Mormons were going to have a pageant um, in Chorley in Lancashire. If you don't know where Chorley in Lancashire is, that's where it is. Do you see the green bit there with the yellow arrow talks about Yorkshire? God's own county is that side. And then, and then you've got Lancashire that side. And you can see the sort of red marker there. The, the lower red marker is where the Mormon temple is in Chorley. There's two temples, Mormon temples within the UK. Uh, this one is the um, biggest one in Europe, I believe, the, the Chorley Temple. And uh, Mormons came across from the US in 1837 and set up shop in Lancashire. And, and that's why it gained some momentum. If they'd have come to Yorkshire, we'd have booted them straight out. <laughs> but that's, that's just as it is. Um, Endearing myself to any Lancashire folk here today. Don? Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, we, we heard they were doing this, so we decided to put a bit of a plan in, in place. I had some friends who did an outreach back in 2013 when they did a, a, a pageant there. And so we, we got in touch with a few guys that were involved in that 10 years ago, a couple of the pastors there. The pastors said to us, look, we, we'd love you to come and do this, but obviously, you know, we live here, so don't come over and cause havoc and then leave a mess for us. They said, and one of the issues they had with the pageant back in 2013 was that it looked more like a protest than an outreach because outside the temple grounds, uh, some Christians were there with big banners saying Joseph lied or whatever it said on them and it just caused a bit of havoc. And they said, we don't really want that. So we decided rather than just saying it's an outreach to Mormons, we'd do a Chorley outreach, which included trying to reach Mormons. So, so it was double-ended. Got in touch with a pastor, uh, Mark Bassett, from this church here, Chorley Free Evangelical Church. He was fantastic. He and his congregation, they said, you can use our church free of charge. Some of the ladies there said, every day we'll come and give you biscuits and make tea for you and everything and, and stuff like that. So they really, really got on board. And what was brilliant about this is that church is right smack in, in Chorley Town Centre. So there again, there's a little map there. You can see I stuck the Chorley sort of sign on there. If you can see it, uh, Chorley Church. So it was right in the town. The town's not very big. I didn't really know much about Chorley Town Centre. Uh, from there up until to the temple is about a mile and a half. So it's a bit of a trek on foot. But we assumed, probably wrongly, but we assumed that there'd be Mormons coming down into the town and inviting people up to the pageant. We didn't see many Mormons about in the town during the two weeks we were there. But uh, more about that in a moment. So that's the temple. Very impressive building, isn't it? Uh, the, the LDS Preston Temple. You're only allowed in there if you're a card-carrying Mormon, um, you know, with a temple recommend. So we couldn't get in there, although a couple of our guys did try their best too. So I'll tell you about that in a moment. Again, I'm just rushing through these so we get to our dinner on time. But that's the sort of grounds. It's a, it's a substantial sort of grounds. Um, you can see there where it says MTC. That's the Missionary Training Center. When missionaries come to the UK, they go there to train before they're let loose on the, on the general public. They've got a chapel in the grounds. Where I've got the arrow saying pageant, they set up a massive, great big marquee there, a solid structure, not just like a tent, big solid structure for their pageant. And they parked outside the grounds. They parked across the motorway over there, and then there were buses that transported the people up to the pageant. So buses kept coming in and out and dropping people off. Now, we, in week one, we only had a small team. There are a few more than this on some days. This was the first day. We only had four guys there. Uh, Gary on the left is, is a local guy, an evangelist who lives in Chorley. And then we've got Peter, who's known to Michael, Peter Beaver, uh, who's had some involvement with Reach Out Trust in the past. He wanted to get involved. The guy who's sort of bent down a little bit, he was like six foot four or something. He was massive. 
That's Andrew. He was from Las Vegas, so he sounded the part. And, uh, and he'd grown up with a lot of Mormons, so he was really interested. And then my friend on the air, Jason, who came over with me from Bradford. And during the day, we decided to just do some general outreach in the town centre. So we'd go there and we'd, we'd sort of have maybe my sketchboard there and stuff like that. We had lots of tracts to give out. And some guys, particularly in the second week, did some open air preaching. But we discovered very quickly the Mormons weren't about. I thought there'd be McDonald's. I thought there'd be, you know, they, they just weren't there. So we thought we're going to have to go up and storm the land. And so we, uh, we went up to, uh, to the temple area. Now, we're not supposed to evangelize on the temple grounds. We can freely walk around there. But we went and evangelized in the temple grounds uh, very sneakily. And uh, we went up, not in large numbers in the first week. We didn't have many of us anywhere. But one of the interesting things, Gary, the guy on the, on the picture before there, who's a local evangelist, he was a little bit anxious. He said, Tony, I'm a little bit worried. Some of these guys might know me, that, you know, because I'm obviously I'm a local guy and he's a bit worried. So as we're walking up towards where the chapel is in the grounds, um, somebody shouted, but they didn't shout Gary, they shouted Tony. And I'm like, who's this? And it was this guy on the left here, Elder Reeves. I'd previously met him a few months ago. I do some training on, on new religious movements at Cape and Ray Bible School. And he, along with three other Mormon missionaries, came and had lunch at the Bible School while I was there. And I gave this guy a really hard time while we were there because when they were just talking to the students, they sounded like they were just Christians. They agreed with everything that was said, you know, and these students are looking confused, so I, I had to play bad cop and press, particularly Elder Reeves, because he seemed to be the, the leader, and forced him to say what they really believed, so these students could see the differences. But he shouted my name. Tony came running up to me like a long-lost brother, and everything. I was really confused. This Mormon's really confusing. And um, so we had a good chat with him. We separated those two out, and I think some people had a chat with Elder Reeves, and he apparently spoke a little bit about me. He said, Tony were a bit hard on me, but but I think he's a good guy, you know. And then Elder Topola there, he was from Finland, so I, I had a good chat with him. Uh, when we got up there, we were greeted by this <laughs> uh, bagpipe playing. I don't know if you can, well, it's, that's playing, but you can't hear it, but you don't need to, it wasn't that good. Um, but yeah, there were bagpipes playing and everything, and we sort of went up into the grounds. There were people who were performing in the pageant. The pageant itself is a grand performance they rehearse it for, for a year at least, or, well, more than a year for this one because they cancelled it. It should have been last year. And they rehearse Mormonism coming to the UK. And then they present that in this pageant with music and acting and stuff. And um, there were some of the actors there. We had a chat with some of those guys. Now, you need a ticket to get into the pageant itself. But there's an area before you go to the pageant area where they had a country fair. Now, we being the first guys up there, they, they were trying to give us tickets to come to the pageant. We didn't really want to go to watch the pageant for two hours, whatever it was. But we said, look, we haven't got a ticket, but is there any chance we can just come to this country fair bit? And they let us in. And they had like a proper, um, didn't they, Carl? They had a proper sort of desk and everything. You had to go through. They were checking your bags, which was really bad because my bag was full of my Mormon tracks. And I'm like, so they're looking at it. Oh, it's just literature. And she, yeah, it looks all right. You can go through. And they let us through into the country fair. When we got in there, it was like a, a cordoned off area like this. You notice there, it says, truth will prevail. That's their, their, their motto for the pageant. You notice there on the, on the thing, there's John Wycliffe. And he, it says on there, they had pictures of, of John Wycliffe and other sort of Christians, you know, reformers and people. And they all said, his story is our story. And I'm thinking, no, it's not. It's definitely not your story. But they had that. Of course, they had the Mormon Jesus there. He put in a visit. Uh, you can always spot the Mormon Jesus, can't you? Um, when we went inside the area, you could get dressed up in Victorian clothing and have your picture taken. We refrained from that as well. Or you could get involved in some country dancing. I definitely refrained from that activity. But we were just amongst them and just trying to see for opportunities just to talk to people. One lady we did speak to was this lady called Beverly who lives in Chester, she was part of the pageant sort of acting group or choir or something. And uh, we had a really good chat with her about what the gospel is. And of course she defended her position like she would, but there, there's a group of us around her and she, she stayed and listened and, and we have a good chat. So remember Beverly. Now if, you, if you've been involved in Reach Out for many years or you've known Reach Out for a lot of years, this picture will mean something to you. If not, maybe not. 
Who does that look like? Yeah. It looks like Doug Harris, doesn't it? The founder of Reach Out Trust. And we were there, and I'm looking, and I was there with Peter Beaver, and I'm saying, there's Doug Harris there. And Peter's like, I'm going to go and have a check him out. And he got him to turn around, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Doug. <laughs> you know, I thought, I don't know whether they brought him back or whatever, but waistcoat and everything. Unbelievable. So, yeah, he was in there. So we did a lot of that during the week. We went into the town centre, did open air preaching, giving out tracts, not really meeting Mormons. And then in the evening when the pageant was on, we, we went up there to try and engage people up there. Week two, we had a, a much bigger crowd join us, which we knew was going to happen because some people could only come for one week. And we had a group from 10 of those, the Christian Book Company, who were really keen to do outreach. And they heard what we were doing in Chorley and said, can we join you? Uh, we went and did some training with their staff team beforehand. They resourced us with all the tracks, the books, everything. And anything that was left over, I just took back to Bradford to bless the people of Bradford with. Um, but they were great. And some of these guys had never, ever been out on the streets before, much spoke to mom before. So a lot of them were really nervous, but it was really good. So every day when they came, we, we tried to do a little bit of a chat, a little bit of training, a little bit of discussion about what we're going to do in the church before we got out on the street. And now I'm going to invite this lady up to just tell you a couple of minutes, Carol, just to share your experience of, of what happened. Does she need this? Yeah, we realise that. <laughs> now you're going to be even louder. Oh, I have to remember not to shout. Right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, my name's Carol, and I thought I'd get involved. I heard that Tony was really funny. Uh, then I met him. Um, so he was. Uh, do, he invited my pastor down to the Mormon uh, pageant outreach, and I decided to tag along. And um, it was very interesting and very eye-opening um, because um, it appeared to me that. The Mormons believed lots of different things and what I thought I knew about Mormonism was apparently very, very little. But we went down to the temple and as Tony said, we couldn't really see many Mormons in the town centre because they just weren't congregating. They were obviously all waiting for the evening pageant to start and they were all going to go down there. But we got some great conversations, didn't we, down in Chorley. We spoke to lots of Catholic people, lots of just regular people and we managed to absolutely blitz Chorley with tracts. Everybody in Chorley got a tract or got witness to so we were quite pleased with the result of that at least anyway. So we went down to um, we went down to the, um, the temple site and we just walked around and we tried not to look too uh, conspicuous um, and we just spoke to people that were there and um, my approach was uh, just asking people if they were Mormons and they were a very good chance of them being Mormons and I just said well I'm not a Mormon I'm a Christian and we just wanted to sort of we're down here just asking about what you believe and what what your faith is and your view on salvation and they were quite happy to talk because they're evangelistic and they want people to become Mormons so they were quite happy to talk to us and it appeared to me that um, they're very busy doing things and it's a, a lot about works and getting baptized for ancestors who've died so they're always looking up people that they're related to from the past and they're, they're very busy doing things. Um, and I think this is what Satan does. He keeps you very busy. So you're not actually doing what God wants you to do. Um, and also, it appeared to me that there's a lot of pride in doing things. If you're doing all these good works, well, when I say good works, according to them, you can have pride in that and you've got something to show for. So you're not relying on this grace that God has given you. Um, and even though um, 
this particular lady I spoke to, I said, but you know, the Bible actually said it's appointed once for men to die and then the judgment. And she seemed to sort of look at me as if she'd never, ever heard that. It seemed a, a really strange thing. Um, and I talked to her about the way of salvation. I let her talk to me about what the Mormons believed about salvation. And then I explained the gospel to her. And it seemed to me that she didn't love the truth enough to want to accept it. She was happy with what she got. And it seemed to me that they, they seemed happy with what they'd got. It was like a little routine thing that they'd got going. Um, and they were comfortable with what they'd got. And they weren't interested. They didn't love the truth. Um, when it was presented to them. And of course, Jesus talks about that, doesn't he? People not loving the truth unto salvation. And it is very sad. And all we can do is present the truth to people. And if that's what they want, and that's what they're seeking, they will take hold of it. Um, and it was a very interesting experience. And I wouldn't have missed it for the world. And I think it is so important that we just keep presenting the truth to people, whether they're in cults, whether they're at work, whether they're neighbours, whether they're in shops, whether they're on the street, whoever they are, we're called to just keep presenting the truth to them. And if they come to the door to us like the Jehovah's or the Mormons, then great, they're actually coming to us. We don't have to go out and seek them out. But... Yeah, it was, it was great. And it's very sad that these people are trapped and they think they're following the way and they need us to, to go out and tell them the truth. Thanks, Carol. Um, really okay. good. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Carol. Carol was a real blessing, along with the pastor from her church, Paul, who'd done it in 2013. Uh, so we invited him back up and he wanted to get involved. So we had lots of interaction up there. We, we went back down into the town then and did lots of stuff in the, in the city centre. There's her pastor there in the nicely coloured shirt, uh, preaching the gospel in the open air. Lots of conversations had, lots of literature given out. Uh, ten of those guys so enthused saying we need to do something next year as well. Um, it may be the best time to actually go and speak to Mormons in Chorley is when there's not a pageant on. Uh, maybe that's that's the answer. Maybe they're all too busy up there. Um, and the, the church would, would love to have us back as well. So we've got some guys there preaching the gospel outside Greg's and stuff. You can't hear that, but you don't need to. Let me just tell you very quickly in finishing. Um, we As the week went on, as the second week went on, we got a little bit bolder. And and I was, I, I didn't want to, we didn't want to show our hand too quickly. We don't want to be deceptive. You know, we said we were Christians when we went up there. We were engaging and discussing. But we thought if we just go en masse and just like go crazy, we're not going to get on anymore. So we need to keep going up and maybe different nights, different people could go up and that's what we ended up doing. But on the, on the Friday, the final Friday, the 10 of those guys said, we'd love to go up. We've never been to the temple. We've never seen it. But they were there just in the afternoon with us. And so I said, well, look, the pageant's on because there was a, a, a matinee pageant on. I said, so maybe it's a good time to take you up. I'll just take you around the grounds point things out to you, probably not going to be many people about, they're all going to be in the pageant, and they were. So when we got up there, there, was, there wasn't hardly anybody about, which was good, I was showing them around the temple, and talking about the training centre and everything to them, and then as we sort of came back around to where the pageant opening is, we saw a table, and on the table were books of Mormon, and he said, please take one. So it was obviously people coming out of the pageant, take a free book of Mormon. So some of our guys, including myself, got a little bit bold and decided it was a good time to put my tracks in the Book of Mormons. <laughs> and, but sadly, we were spotted by a security guard who radioed his friends and, and we were, well, this happened really. We were booted <laughs> off the site and um, told to get lost. So we split up in the grounds there. So we came out uh, a few at a time. But we noticed when we were all gone out, there was one lad missing. And it was, it was the lad, a young lad called Josh who'd come to help us for that week. And he was the one that looked most like a Mormon missionary. We was always joking him about that. So we, we were joking when he was the only one left in. They probably think he's one of theirs, so left him in. 
but actually, Josh had a really traumatic experience. He came out, he was very shook up, didn't want to come to the town centre afterwards. I took him home, met him for a bite to eat afterwards, and he said he just felt real spiritual warfare up there. It really shook him. And he said, I was talking to a Mormon, an older Mormon missionary couple, who, when Josh was asked to leave, this couple said to the security guard, leave him alone, he's only talking to us. And, they, and the guard went off, but then somebody in authority came along and said, the presidency says he's got to leave. And so they, they felt a bit sad, but he felt sad for them, and he was conflicted, and he, he had our time. He, he realized it was spiritual warfare. Now, very quickly, we went back down into the town center, then realizing we can't go up to the temple anymore. That is done. But it was right at the end anyway. Uh, and then, would you believe, that afternoon we saw Mormon missionaries in, in the town center. So we, you, there's my friend Jason having a chat with him. I took the picture. I was chatting alongside him there. But just finally, um, this family, um, an Indian family, came up to the book table. And um, I, did, I, I wasn't there, uh, but one of the ten of those guys came over and got me and said, this family, they're Mormons. Come and have a chat with them. So I went over, had a chat with them. Durga, who's the husband there, um, I was chatting to him and sharing the gospel with him. And, and he said to me, really funny, he said, you remind me of someone that I'd been watching, I saw on God TV. I'd been watching on God TV. I thought, oh no, Benny Hinn. I thought, oh no, it's a nightmare. And he said, no, no, what's his name? What's his name? He said, uh, Billy, Billy, I said, Billy Graham. He says, yeah, I thought that'll do. That's, that's all right. I'll have that. But what he said to me, he says, I'm really interested in what you're saying. Do you do home visits? And the pastor has been to visit since their, their home in Chorley. And the wife said, I'm going to bring the kids down to, uh, to the church, to the parent and toddlers group. Pray for them. I, I, I don't think they've been yet. And he's, Mark's going to visit them. I had a chat with them again this week. But it was really interesting in what we were saying. So that's Durga, Margaret, the little boy's called Jeffrey, little kid, I have no idea. But remember Durga and family. Shall I just pray? Yeah. Or do you want to say something very quickly? Yeah. Before it was yeah, yeah. And who should be there but Mike Thomas? And I'll never forget Mike Thomas bringing out of his pocket a beer map which he got from the local club, which had on it between all the, these angels with the. Uh, really? Uh, uh, it looks like the angel's trumpet. All right, yeah. Really? Michael Thomas, do you remember that? <laughs> that? Was very at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Michael said, you know, guilty as chest. I was mm. You know, there's only two things that would stop me joining your religion. Mm. And they're curious to mm. that. Mm. And I say, and they ask me, what are they? And I say, what you teach about God and what you teach about men. Mm. And that, that often brings a good yeah. conversation. Mm. But the sad thing is, in Chorley, they've got a Christian bookshop. Mm. And there wasn't one book on Mormonism mm. in there. Oh, yeah. that's changed. Yeah. There, there is the LDS bookshop in, um, in, in, in Chorley as well, which we went into. And they had some well dodgy books in there. All their stuff and then some really dodgy books. But I can talk to you about that over lunch. Let me just pray quickly and then we'll go for lunch. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to just speak to people about the gospel. And we do pray for Durga and his family. Um, we pray for, for all the, the guys we spoke to at that pageant. Lord, we know sometimes we seem like we don't get much response. But as we've heard already, we don't know what's going on in people's hearts and minds and lives. Father, I pray those that took tracks, took literature you will convict them of their need to come to the Lord Jesus. Now bless us now as we go for our lunch and just help us to continue to have a wonderful day together as we share in fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Yeah, three o'clock.